This is a high level tutorial for how to make sunglasses and clo, but not necessarily the measurements to make these specific ones. If you'd like to receive these sunglasses as an OBJ, you can sign up to our email list on our website at ides.studio and you'll receive a free pair and a tote bag. Starting with the rectangle tool, I'm going to left click down in the 2D background and enter in the measurements for a rectangle that is the total length and height of the arm of my sunglasses. I know this is a bit tricky to figure out, at least with my sunglasses, everything has a curve to it. So I just did the best that I could and there is some fumbling around that you'll see I go through as I'm trying to get the shape right. With add point split line, I started by right clicking on the top edge and splitting the line in a few places as reference points for where the arm of the sunglasses begins to curve. I had a few failed attempts of trying to draw the shape out and so I'm going to show you what actually worked. So here I've split my line at the side for the height and thickness of the arm of my sunglasses, and at the top I've split the line to designate where the glasses start to curve down. Then with internal polygon, I basically just traced my sunglasses out. So as ridiculous as this might be to 3D modelers, in Clo, you have to do things as a flat pattern piece and then add thickness and give them shape. It's certainly not 100% accurate in terms of measurement. So what I'm doing is holding my glasses up to my screen. I have my pattern as close to scale as possible. And because I'm having to draw with one hand, for my curve points, I'm clicking and dragging and using Bezier curves. And I'm just getting it as close as I can. It's very wonky, but I'm gonna fix it afterwards if I can just get an idea of the shape. In order to clean this up, I just select my pattern with transform pattern and copy paste it. I delete the markings on the new pattern and then I lay it over top of the existing one and get my internal polygon again. And now I can trace over what I had here using curve points and create a more accurate shape, but using that first one as a reference. Now I can revise my curves with my edit curve point tool. Using the smooth curve tool, I click and drag the corners to round them out. The first one I just do by sight and tap my right click when I'm happy so I know what amount I used. And then I do the same amount on the second one. Then with transform pattern, I right click on my internal shape and choose cut. Now you can delete everything but the sunglass arm pattern we've created. You're gonna wanna put your particle distance down as low as your computer will allow you performance wise. I'm gonna put mine to the smallest that Clo allows, which is 0.8. Then I'm gonna add rendering thickness to my pattern, which will add thickness in the 3D window. And if you don't see that, make sure you have thick textured surface view turned on. I also adjust the curvature percentage from 100% to 30. So here I play with how much thickness is added and adjust it from 3 millimeters down to 2. And where I edited the curvature percentage before, that adjusts how curved the edges are. So then I play with bringing it a little bit higher to make the edges more round. Using my gizmo, I place the pattern on the ground. You can actually simulate this pattern, but first I'm going to apply physical properties to it using this drop drop down menu and selecting trim hardware. And I'm going to make sure that I strengthen it with control H or command L before I simulate. Now we're gonna grab our pin box tool and marquee over the tip of our pattern. And basically with simulation turned on, I'm gonna use my gizmo to move this around and kind of lift it up to create a bit of a bend in the arm of the sunglasses. Now I'll right click to delete these pins and I'll repeat the process marqueeing a little bit further up to continue to add more curve to the arm. Now I'll use my gizmo to arrange the arm of my sunglasses as though they're sitting on a table. So I need to get it straight. You'll notice that my screen jumps a lot because I'm using my view hotkeys of two, four, six, eight, and five. This is best practice if you use the default gizmo like I do, because you wanna make sure that you're looking on it from those straight on angles before you start rotating or moving it around. 
So I've set this up so that when I'm looking from above, the sunglasses are running vertically, so from front to back, because I want to copy, mirror, paste the other arm of the sunglasses, and I need that to go from left to right, because you can only copy, paste left to right or right to left in the 2D window, or up and down, but not forward and backward. So Control C, Control R will copy, mirror, paste, hold Shift, and while you're placing it down, tap your right click to enter in the distance over that you want to paste it. So that would be the width of your total sunglasses. Making the lenses is very similar to making the sunglass arms. So if you skipped that part, I suggest you watch that first. I've made a rectangle that is the total height of my lenses and half the width of the entire glasses because we're gonna do the same thing with these that we did with the arms where we only make one side and then we copy mirror paste. So using internal polygon, I'm gonna draw out the exterior shape of my lens, including the frames around it. I did all the same fumbling around with these that I do with the sunglass arms, trying to get them right. I also copy pasted what I did while trying to trace the glasses and drew over them again using curve points instead of bezier curves. I use the smooth curve tool to smooth out some of the curves and round some of the corners. I suggest once you get the initial shape you want that you can extend the pattern with edit pattern to give yourself some space so that you can cut these out. Once you cut it out, of course, there's always further editing to do. And here I drew a new line to create my center because I felt like it was a little bit too long at the nose piece. Then I apply the same rendering thickness and curvature percentage as the arm of the sunglasses. I use my gizmo to arrange the pattern on the floor, set the collision thickness to zero, and strengthen and simulate. Make sure that you freeze the arms of the sunglasses before you simulate the lenses. So then I'm gonna actually raise this up off the floor just a little bit, and using my pin box, I'm gonna put a little square of pins in the center of the pattern, and I'm gonna simulate to create that sort of dome to the pattern shape. After right-clicking and deleting the pins, I simulate for just a split second to get rid of any kind of square shape created by the pins. To get the shape of the bridge, I rotate the pattern over, lift it up, and kind of angle it down. Here I use clone symmetric pattern with sewing instead of copy mirror paste because I want the edits to happen to both sides. So it didn't end up exactly where I wanted it to in 3D, so I just slid it over to the right position. Then I'm going to right click on the center line and choose merge. I'm actually skipping over all the finagling that I did to create the bridge shape. I recommend instead that you jump to this stage, put pins on either side, and use gravity to allow the center bridge to drop down. You can place pins in the very center to make sure that that it's symmetrical. I made the mistake of cutting my glasses apart at the center to decrease the length of the nose bridge. I'm pretty sure that's what created this issue when using pins, so I want to show you how I solved it. In order to re-simulate and get rid of this bumpy texture, I placed pins on the outer edge of the glasses. So on a segment, you can double click and it will place pins across that pattern edge. And I just kind of moved around my glasses in order to freeze the outer edge so that I could simulate the center and get rid of this texture. And one thing I realized very quickly was that strengthening was causing more issues than not. So make sure you turn that off. I then used my gizmo to arrange this pattern as well with the sunglass arms. This did require me to also make some adjustments to the position of my sunglass arms as well as the pattern. Make sure that you select both arm patterns and apply linked editing before you make any pattern adjustments. I had to smooth out my glasses one more time using that same technique of placing pins around the pattern outline and and this time I did use strengthening when simulating. The last step for this part of the glasses is to use the internal ellipse tool to create the shape for the lenses. I used transform pattern and my edit curve point tool to get the shape right. Hopefully, unlike me, you still have linked editing in your pattern, but I had to copy mirror paste my shape onto the other side. When you have them both drawn, you can select them and right click and choose cut. Then you can move them out of the way. I then made my lenses thinner than my glasses by setting the rendering thickness to one and I reduced the curvature percentage on the lenses. I also reduced the curvature percentage on my glass frames. In the end, I set the frames to 50 and the lenses to 10. 
To make the metal frame within the arms, you're gonna copy paste the arms and place them directly on top of the existing ones in the 2D window. That places them in exactly the same spot in 3D and then you can move the 2D patterns. Then with edit pattern, select these two segments, right click and choose offset as internal line. Make sure the segments end up inside the pattern. I have to check reverse direction off and then I enter in 0.08 inches. Using add point split line, I just kind of eyeball where to put points here based on the design of my frames. Then using edit pattern and clicking and dragging and tapping my right click, I move the second set of points in closer to each other by the same amount. And then I delete the ends of these lines. Then using internal polygon, I draw the shape of the arm and I copy paste it below for the other side. I use my edit curve point tool to reshape some of the curve and edit pattern to adjust the segment points. Anywhere that you draw using separate segments, you need to then marquee over those segment points and right click and choose join overlapping points. In the end, it needs to be one continuous shape. You'll also wanna check that these points extend to the pattern outline because we're gonna select the whole shape, right click and choose cut. Then you can select the outer part of these shapes and delete them and you're left with the metal arm inside. Then I decrease the rendering thickness on these patterns to 0.3 and I change the material type on the fabric they're assigned to, to metal. Make sure that only these two pattern pieces are assigned to that fabric. I won't get into the full material settings at this stage, but if you select all your other patterns and assign them to their own fabric, I made mine plastic and a little bit transparent, then you can really see what the metal arm looks like. First, I need to mark out where my nose piece is going to go. Because this point here is a curve point and I don't want to convert it to a segment point, instead I'm going to use my notch tool and add a notch here, and I'll do it on both sides. Then I'm going to split this line and add a point for the bottom of the nose piece on both sides of the glasses. I actually started out with my nose piece as a rectangle that was the total length and width of the nose piece. My plan was to sew it onto my glasses and be able to kind of visually figure out the shape of it, but it's such a small pattern that I wasn't able to actually cut the shape out. I kept getting an error. I recommend that you use the polygon tool and use the total length as a reference and then just kind of figure out the shape on your own and you can edit it afterwards. So I'm going to show you that now. Click and hold to grab your polygon tool here. So you're gonna draw the length first, holding shift, and then I'm gonna trace out my line here. You're gonna hold control to create curve points. And don't worry too much, you can see mine are a little bit messed up. It doesn't wanna go right on top. You'll be able to edit that afterwards. Just get an idea of the shape. This will be easier to edit than if you were to cut it out from a rectangle. Then you'll wanna set your particle distance to 0.8 on the pattern and make sure all the other pattern pieces of your glasses are frozen. Then I I'm gonna sew mine on using free sewing, starting with my nose piece, and then I'm gonna sew to my blue dot. You can use segment sewing if you have the segment point marked matching the length, but I decreased the length of my nose piece and didn't move my segment point. So I'm just following my blue dot as a guide. With edit sewing, select your sewing and change your seam line intensity to zero and the fold angle to 90. Then in 3D, you can right click on your pattern and choose superimpose side. Then you can simulate and the fold angle we applied will make the nose piece flip back. I did a bunch more finagling with the patterned shape and I also used my gizmo to slide it out a bit away from the glasses. Now that we have the shape, we don't need to simulate it anymore. Then we're gonna create our cloned copy using Control or Command D. Make sure you hold Shift when you place it down in 2D so that it's directly beside and then you can just slide it straight over with your gizmo in 3D and it'll be in the right place. Make sure you create a symmetric clone in case you want to do any further editing. I had to apply linked editing afterwards here, so don't do a copy mirror paste. To save you the suspense here, I tried lots of troubleshooting techniques with displacement maps, 
in order to make my logo look raised up, I wanted it to be a metal embossed logo and nothing seemed to work. Basically, the material types that we use with their translucency and the light passing through them, the displacement maps just don't look right. So if we just keep it simple, you'll want to put your logo artwork as a PNG in a folder within the Clo library and right click and add as graphic. Place it down on the arm of your sunglasses where you want it. And then using the edit graphics tool, which you're gonna be in after you add a graphic, you can scale the graphic and just move it around manually. And if you want it to look like mine in the graphics tab of the property editor, you can select your graphic and change the material type to metal. Then if you see my render preview, you'll see that this basically achieves what I wanted without all of the hassle of displacement maps. Making the hinges is shockingly unsophisticated. So I just made a little pattern. I eyeballed the size and I just based the shape off a simplified version of what the hinge on my sunglasses looked like. I set the particle distance as small as it will go to 0.8. And then I added a few curve points because of how small the pattern is. You can't get a lot of definition. And then I assign it to the same metal material as my internal frames. And then I arrange it in 3D with my gizmo. Remember the key to making objects in Clo is figuring out which side is going to be your flat edge that creates your pattern shape, and then the rest will be added thickness. So I'm going to add four millimeters in my rendering thickness, and I tried it with curvature percentage off completely, and then ended up adding it back at 10%. Once I get that piece positioned where I want it, I grab my polygon tool to create the other part of my hinge. Again, I just simplified hinges and the look that I was going for based on my glasses, and I just eyeballed this. Then I assign it to my metal material and set the particle distance to 0.8. With transform pattern, I made my pattern a bit narrower, and then I set my rendering thickness and my curvature percentage to 10. Then I use my gizmo to arrange it. You can hide patterns like this with shift Q. Then I adjust the rendering thicknesses until I'm happy with how they look. I adjusted the first pattern from four to three. And in the end, I ended up with the second pattern at 2.8. Then with transform pattern, select both your hinge pieces, right click and clone symmetric pattern with sewing. You don't really need sewing here, but I'm just used to doing that. And I also know the hotkey for it, command or control D. Make sure you hold shift as you place it down in 2D so that it stays on the same plane in 3D. Then you just arrange it with your gizmo. I'm going to give you a cheat sheet for how I did my materials, but first I should say that you want all of your materials assigned to three separate fabrics. So I have my entire glasses frames assigned to one material, which I've named plastic. And for this, I use both plastic and glass, depending on whether or not there's a texture image. The hinges and the internal frames in the arms are assigned to this one called metal, and that's just the default metal setting in the property editor under material type. The two lens patterns are assigned to their own material here, and sometimes I use glass for this, and sometimes I use iridescence with a metalness setting to make them look reflective. Here's the cheat sheet for the material settings for four different lenses and frames that I made. Feel free to screenshot it or pause the video and write them down. 